you actually got to go sit in satsang with the Buddha, oh, you, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't miss a thing. You would pay very close attention. So it's not just, I'm not just inviting you to s- this possibility of satsang with yourself. I'm saying, what if you actually approached yourself that same way? What if you actually approached your own your own being the same way you would approach the most amazing being you know of? What if you actually had that same reverence, that same curiosity, that same intensity of focus and attention that you directed it towards yourself? What would that be like? And you know, right away, it's funny how right away there starts there may there may start to be some sense in which you go looking for something like the Buddha inside yourself, right? Oh well, if I could just find the Buddha inside myself, then I could do just what Nirmala said, right? You go looking for something special, a special self, a special me. You, go, you try to try to find something within you that's worthy of that kind of satsang, that kind of meeting. But actually, what I'm what I'm suggesting, fortunately for you, <laughs> is something much simpler, right? which is to actually approach yourself just the way you are in satsang, in this in this kind of reverence. And curiosity, and and intensity of of wanting to know, to actually know what is this self that you are right now, not some new improved spiritual self that you will be someday, you know, or that you could be if you just tried harder. But to just go ahead, just go ahead and sit at the feet of your of your ordinary self. And what you might discover is that it's quite an amazing self. It might surprise you actually what you found if you if you looked that way. It's not a question of finding the right thing in yourself to look at the right dimension of your being, the right expanded quality of presence that you, that you hope to find someday. It's not so much a question of that, it's a question of, of how you actually look within. It's more a question of this willingness to actually meet wholeheartedly with all, with all of your faculties, all of your senses the way again the way you would meet the buddha but to meet yourself that same way <laughs> so you know i mentioned last night that we often we often think of we often imagine oneness as again something special some special dimension of being, some part of our our being that we only occasionally have access to if we're lucky, that we've maybe had a glimpse of if we're lucky. And we overlook this possibility that all there if you know, if it's if it really is oneness, and it's kind of a paradox, right, that we go looking for oneness somewhere else. Right? Or in some other experience. It's like if if it really is oneness, how could there be anything else? Right? How could there be something else that we that we need to go looking for? That sounds like a kind of lame oneness to me. You know, <laughs> it's like that's oneness, but they didn't quite make it all the way to oneness. You know? <laughs> turns out that the way oneness expresses, the way oneness experiences differences is by experiencing part of itself. It doesn't change its nature. It just only looks at part of it, only tastes part of itself, only experiences part of itself. 
but that's still the oneness. But it creates a difference, right? When you only experience part of something, it's really different, especially then if you experience another part of it or if you experience all of it. You know, if you experience the tail end of a tiger, that's a whole lot, heck of a lot different than the other end of the tiger. Right? If you only experience the tail end, that's, you know, that's pretty easy to deal with. So all of this difference, all of this apparent difference and separation is just the way oneness has of exploring itself, of trying out different perspectives on this same stuff. So this is, this is to give, again, another sense in which it might actually be worth your while to approach the self that you have right now the same way you would approach the Buddha. Because that's what it is. That's what it's made of. That's what this ordinary self is, really. It's just a part. It's just a limited expression of it. But its nature, its, its fundamental qualities are the same as, as any and every expression. You know, the, the only thing I would add, just in case, in case it still seems like kind of a stretch, right? Seems like, oh, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe I could approach myself that, that, with that much reverence. If that seems like a stretch, a, a good, a, a nice, easy way to start, right, is to approach yourself as if you were on a blind date, <laughs> right? It's like you don't know yet. You don't know yet. I mean, you know, it's like may maybe this is the one, right? Maybe this is my soulmate. Maybe this is like really going to be something, right? You know, my friends all think so. They fix me up with this person, you know. But imagine again how you how you would approach a blind date. You you approach it with. You know, you don't approach it with any assumptions. You don't know. You, you're like willing to find out. So if it's if it seems like too much of a stretch to consider, you know, the possibility that the the kind of ordinary self that shows up on a Friday afternoon at the end of a long work week and tries to, you know, put on a good satsang face that that actually is what you came here to meet. Right? At least, at least there's this possibility of approaching it like you don't know. Approaching it like this maybe really, and it maybe really is the first time you've met this expression of yourself. Like I said, it's, you know, all this difference, all this change, all these, all these different experiences are just different different pieces of this different ways of of tasting a little bit here a little bit there so it's actually possible that this self tonight you know this whatever whatever you refer to right now whatever you would be referring to right now if you said i or me not, not some special I or special me that you'll experience someday, but just the one that's here right tonight. It's possible that you actually haven't met this one. Right? That there is very simply a newness to it. Something that you haven't experienced yet. But that might always, always be true. It's definitely different, especially if you if you look back. <laughs> Give him a little nudge. <laughs> you look back through time. Has it always been this me? Has it always, you know, had exactly this many wrinkles and blemishes and <laughs> injuries and scars? <laughs> Or is it is it like a little bit different than the me that 
at least at least a little bit different than the me that went to kindergarten. Right? Probably a lot different than that one. Probably a lot different than the one that that went to high school. Right? I don't know, it just depends how long it's been, I guess. <laughs> but it might even be different than the one that woke up this morning. Right? There might there might be see that's just a another another reason for this invitation. Because because this this oneness is all there is, right? And so this self that you're experiencing is that which you've been seeking, is that which is real, is true, right? The the recognition of that, even even the the considering of the possibility of that. It actually shifts your sense of it. It actually starts to give you that fuller sense. A fuller sense of, of oneness. For as long as, you, as long as you're willing kind of to just go with, you know, kind of just go with my words, go with the, the invitation that's being offered of actually tasting yourself. To taste yourself actually gives you a fuller, actually also shifts you into a fuller experience of yourself. But that's not that's not the point. That's not there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a fuller experience of yourself. That's not the point here. The point here is to find out what's the nature of yourself. In fact it's so much so much more the point to know the nature of yourself. That even even when there is a fuller experience of yourself, right? One of the richest things, one of the one of the most amazing things you can do with that fuller sense of yourself is to once again meet any part of yourself that doesn't seem to be part of that. It's like as soon as you even start to get a taste of your Buddha nature, of your true nature, of your of the amazing mystery of your existence, your awareness your presence. One of the best things you can do at that moment is to actually then meet whatever it seems you might be trying to get away from. It's when there's it's when there's this recognition of of both the the pain, the the difficulty, the tightness, the limitation, the ego, the suffering, the the struggle of life. Right. When there's a recognition of that, and at the same time, there's a recognition of this true nature. Not again, not worrying about how big it is, not worrying about, you know, somehow making it into the spiritual Olympics, right, and becoming the most amazingly enlightened person yet. Right. It's like just just whatever sense there is right now of of this miracle of your own being, of awareness just the way it is, and at the same time being willing to also touch anything that seems to be left out. So I hope that, I hope that gives a, a, a felt sense of, it's like, it's like a richer possibility. Not to, not to, First of all, not to think that being is something, anything except what's here right now. Right. And then to consider this possibility that even when there is a sense of something more, that that still doesn't mean that there's anywhere better to go. It's actually when there is this willingness to, in a sense, have one foot in and one foot out not to just as soon as you get a sense of oneness of of something real to to you know to just you know try as hard as you can to to dissolve into it right to bliss out to to you know take a really cosmic vacation right? by the way there's nothing wrong with that i'm just i'm just pointing to a, another possibility and that is to to stay in touch with all the pain, all the, all the confusion, 
because that's that's actually where that gets healed. That's where there actually is the possibility of truly seeing the oneness of your own fear, the oneness of your own doubt. It's a strange kind of healing, right? The healing is in seeing its nature, seeing what, what's really true about the painful parts of your being. So it's a strange kind of healing because it, once you see the nature of it, you see that there's nothing to heal. I use the metaphor that it's like if you, if you get bit by a snake and you go to the doctor to get anti-venom. And then when you describe the snake, the doctor says, oh, well, that's not poisonous. <laughs> right? That's the whole treatment. Right? You're done. That's the, you know, they, they put a Band-Aid on it and out the door. And so that's this, that's this like richer possibility of, of satsang with yourself. To find a healing of this self that is simply a recognition of what's really true about it. And if that, if that, you know, if, if in any, it, to whatever degree you, you actually hear that invitation, you actually take it a little bit, you know, actually right, right now, this evening, and uh, to whatever degree, to whatever extent, there is a new, a new found curiosity about your own self, right? That's, that is the, that's the greatest gift, you know, that's the, that is the real gift of satsang. It has nothing to do with being wowed by, you know, by some, some clever words or being touched by some profound presence. It has to do with what you find ab- out about yourself. Because that's a, you know, I, I actually call my my little uh, nonprofit endless satsang. Right? That's that's when it that's when that's actually a possibility. Right? It's when you find satsang with yourself, find that which you come to for in satsang right inside yourself. Ah, what a relief, you know. It's like, whew, man, been looking for it for a long time. What a convenient place to find it, <laughs> right? Phew. Saves you a lot of airfare, right? Saves you a lot of schlepping, a lot of, a lot of web surfing, a lot of book reading, a lot of all that stuff. Because now you, now you can just sit in satsang. Now you can work in satsang. Now you can get dressed every morning in satsang, brush your teeth in satsang wash the dishes in satsang. It's always, always available. <laughs> so, my, so my question for you, really, you know, that, like I said, it's this invitation to yourself. My question to you is, what is yourself like right now? What is this self that came tonight. Again, it's, it doesn't matter what you find. It's the, it's the willingness to meet it wholeheartedly. <laughs> and so if there's anything, anything at all about yourself, <laughs> Everybody's favorite topic, right? Okay. If there's anything at all about yourself that you would like to like to meet, that you would like to to come sit in satsang with, come, you know, ask a question of, really find out what's what's like, really tell me what's really going on here. What's this really all about? What is what is this feeling I'm having? What is the, what are these thoughts? What is this experience? What is this body, anyways? Right? If there's anything about yourself that you want to meet in satsang, all I ask actually is that you come up here. Right? 
This is what the front of the satsang is for. It's for the person that you came to satsang to see. <laughs> I'm just the uh, master of ceremonies. <laughs> please, please. Hey. It's funny how you'd be sitting there and just kind of watching yourself get up. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, who did that? I, yeah, isn't that something? Ah. <laughs> uh, I have a man at home. <laughs> you do. You guys have something in common. <laughs> Anybody else here have somebody at home? <laughs> and even if you don't, it's like when you get home, are you home? You know. <laughs> then you got yourself at home. Yeah. That's like even more trouble. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, well, um, this your your talk is coming at just the right time mm. for me. Um, mm. The last. Few, maybe the last week or so, I've been experiencing something in my relationship um, that's pretty new mm. in this relationship that yes. I experienced 20 years ago in ah. my with my husband, ex-husband, right. that caused us to have the divorce. Right. And um, at that time, it was very devastating and uh, it was very difficult right. and emotionally. Right. And now some of these things are have hints of these things happening again. I mean, right. just vague hints, but enough to trigger a lot right. of the feelings. Yeah, so what's, but what's it like this time? Well, this time, on my way here, I was recognizing the similarities. Right. And then also finding myself wanting to pay attention, which... Uh-huh. Last huh. time I was kind of, right. I don't know. <laughs> didn't, want to, didn't want to go there. <laughs> didn't, right. want, didn't even think to go right, there. Right. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so now I'm more aware of it. And mm. um, and um, so what's that like? What's it like right now? What's it like right now if you let that, again, <sighs> that, that sense of awareness, you know, right now there's awareness. And and, and the, what if there's also this willingness to let things be triggered, right? To actually start to again touch what's happening in your life, right? Right. But with awareness, don't you don't like go? You don't. Yes. You know, completely lose touch with awareness. You recognize that there also is awareness here. Yeah, that's what I was getting a little bit of on my drive over here. Yes. That there was this. Um, that I I wanted. Not to stifle it, right. to stifle the feelings, right. or run away from it, right. or fix it. Right. It was more of a, uh, of, there's kind of a wanting to watch it play out. Uh-huh. And um, find out everything you can about it. Mm-hmm. Remember, it's like this is your chance with the Buddha. Right. This is what your it chance, didn't right? dawn on me, though, that you were saying is that that also is. Is it or me or yes? Yes. There's something. Self. There's something kind of like locked away inside that react reaction. You know, some aspect of true nature that just gets kind of locked up in there. So it's not. It's like it really is this invitation to satsang with it's, with your own fear, you know, or with your own hurt, with your own pain. Is that pain or that hurt or that thing that's locked up? Could it be similar to the tail of the tiger? <laughs> I mean, that, that that when you look at it, may turn into something else, and it wasn't a tiger at all, or it's, whatever. Uh, totally, totally possible. It's probably quite likely. Because right? I I have a hard time <clears throat> seeing it as something locked up inside something else so you know don't it's like don't don't worry about knowing ahead of time <laughs> right? you just find out about it just just meet it just explore it just be with it just sense as much as you can find out about this this energy this reaction this you know that was that was you didn't even give it a name yet right you just said mm-hmm. there's like this mm-hmm, exactly right mm-hmm. it's like what can you find out about that what can you discover? If, if maybe in this case there isn't anything inside it, 
what's that like? You know, to find out that it's just something very, very simple. Right? Or possibly, you know, it has layers. Mm-hmm. It'll be like, you know, unwrapping a gift. Uh, that, you know, did you ever get a gift where <laughs> they op- open the gift and then there's another box that's wrapped? Mm-hmm. And then you unwrap that one and then there's another box that's wrapped, you know? Mm-hmm. Like peeling the onion kind yeah. of thing. Um, also, I in looking at the inner mm, stuff, yes. right it's now. right here. Yeah, mm. what is that? What's that like? <laughs> it's uh, fear. And how do you know that? How do you know that it's fear? What is the what? What are the qualities of it's fear? It's a tightening, ah. and it's a um, wanting to run. Right. So, so just like this, this, this is the way you can start, right? Is just check: is is tightening a bad sensation? It's not pleasant. Really? What's what, why do you say it's not pleasant? What is what is not pleasant about tightening? Not as, pleasant as a pure sensation. If for a moment you just <coughs> feel the tightness, how is tightness not pleasant? Well, it feels like adrenaline. It feels like uh-huh. yeah, things so speed up. Um, so there's a lot of energy. Not peace. It feels like not peace. Right. Okay. So whatever it is, right, which is not peace, <laughs> <laughs> right, is, is is like that raciness of adrenaline. Is that a bad sensation? Well. <clears throat> Just check. Don't don't and don't give me like the right answer. Uh, again, this question is for you to find out: Is there actually something present in this reaction that's a bad sensation? Yeah. It it it. Well, it seems to want. It's hooked up somehow with tears and wanting ah. to cry and throat getting tight. So there's also that that kind of pressure that of tears and the tightness in your throat. Uh-huh. Right, so just check both of those. Are those bad sensations? <laughs> it's <laughs> check. Is that is that is that wanting to cry? Is is that urge to cry a bad a bad experience? A bad sensation? I guess only because I don't. I have it. I don't. I my preference. It has been a preference not to want to do that. Right. Yeah. So, so just check right now, which one actually is uncomfortable? The, the urge to cry or the resistance? The, the trying to stop the crying. Which one actually causes the, the sense of, of discomfort? Or? Right. It is, the, it is the resistance. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, but now I want you to like take it even, even more subtle, right? And just find out, is the resistance itself actually a bad sensation? If for a moment you just let yourself, like just just stifle that crying. <laughs> right? Just clamp down and it's like, not, no, not, I'm not in front of this many people. You're not going to well, get I'm me not, to... You're right. not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so find out if that little part of your being that stops you from crying. Like is that really? Is there really something bad there? Is there really something? No. No. It's like a, it's just a, it's like a flexing of a muscle, right? It's, it's like distracting. A, yeah, it's distracting. it's a flexing, and it's it's it demands attention. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah. it's. So what happens right now if you just give it attention? Just again, just the way it is. <coughs> no, no, no need to change this resistance to crying. It's natural. It's as normal as crying. They're both natural. Well, now it just seems like the whole thing is kind of settling down. And I don't know if I'm running away from it or if it's just settling down on its own. But either way... (laughs) It's better. It's a funny thing when you when it's okay for there to be resistance. A lot of times you don't need it anymore. Huh. It's again, it's like that strange kind of antidote. The antidote where you find out that there's no need for an antidote. There's nothing here to get rid of. Hmm. Not even the urge to get rid of things.
ว่าIt's kind of like peeling an onion. You know, if you just keep going, pretty soon you're like throwing out onion. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you're not throwing out peel anymore. You're throwing out the good stuff. <laughs> wow, I'm so grateful for <clears throat> tonight and mm. this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> So I hope I, I, it's like the, it's, I, I say it all the time. I always say anything else, right? But it's not just like a, it's not just uh, a, a convenient phrase. I really mean it. Anything. Anything. What is it? What is your experience? You know, one of the best best uses of this opportunity to have satsang is to, is to come up here with the last thing you would ever want to have satsang with. Right. That's, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't even have to be the worst thing. You know, it can also just be whatever you don't want to have satsang with right now. <laughs> Hello. I'm good. Um, I've been meditating for a while. Hmm. I had some big experiences. Great. Thought I was ready for the final blowout. Yeah, don't we wish it would come yeah. sooner? Yeah. That's natural. Sorry. It's natural <laughs> to think that there's something special about that. Right. And now I just feel like I'm left like in like a it's like you get to a point where there's nothing left to believe in mm-hmm. there's it's all just right. there's no form there's no structure right. though I sense a structure the structure I do sense I don't like and all uh-huh. I want to do is just rip it out say more about that what is this structure that you don't like I don't know. It feels it's so rigid. Ah, uh, it's yes. so inflexible. So just just for a moment, just really feel that. Feel that that like what's what's it what's what's it made of? Is it like steel? Is it like iron? Is it? It seems like it, but it's not. I know. It, I mean, I know it's not. Right. I know it's just. But that's the, that's the experience of it, right? That's right. The, again, that's the that's the piece of the puzzle. Right, it's all sharp edges and ah, corners. There's no, yes. there's no roundness to it right. at all. So just for a moment, just let yourself really, really be rigid. Right, let that part. You know, it's not. It's, we're not talking about all of you, right? We're just talking about this part that is rigid. What happens if, for a moment, you know, just for this one short moment, you just let it be rigid? What happens if you just feel that sharpness, feel the edginess? Just for a moment, like what if it's possible that that's the right way for rigid things to feel? What if it's just its nature, it's just like the way it... You know, you don't expect that something made of iron to feel the same as something made of cloth. Like a stuffed teddy bear or something. Is that, it, it, like, this is, a, a, again, that funny question, is rigid actually a bad sensation? No. Yeah. It's different. It's totally, totally different than when something's all soft and melted and flowing. Right. Right. So just for a moment, just let yourself, like, almost enjoy the difference. Enjoy 
how rigid things can get. that you find when you let it be rigid? It stretches out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out not to be so rigid, really. Yeah. Or not to only be capable of being rigid. Right. You know, it has other ways of... It of has other ways of presenting its yeah. rigidity. Yeah. If that's a word. Yeah. It has other ways of... Moving. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been trying to make it move a certain way. Right out or away right. or <laughs> you know and it just it just so happens that when you're when you're trying to get rid of something you don't find out about it right, right. how well do you get to know the people that you're chasing out of your house right. Right. not very well you don't actually get to find out what they're like right and they so could be useful it could be could be this could be a very valuable spiritual even yeah. part of you Rigidity is good at times. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's not... It's not... And it's not even, like I said, it's not even the whole story of it. No. I was concerned... Because I felt like just really... Yeah. Breaking things and just yeah. smashing and... Right. Yeah, not people. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice, you know. It's like even that, even that urge to smash something. You know, especially yeah. if you, you know, there's the, t- you know, usually with an urge like that, we either suppress it, yeah. right, or we act it out. In both cases, it's so it's to try to stop feeling it. Right. right. But what if you just like sit in it, just <laughs> feel it. A lot of energy. Why? Why waste it on? You know. Because it doesn't. It doesn't feel. It doesn't feel like love. That's well, it yeah. doesn't. It feels. Love has a lot of different flavors. Yeah, it feels. It, I don't know. It feels like. Uh, yesterday it was so hot. There's this kind of. Ah. You know, this wind. Everybody's aura is expanded when everybody's just sort of. It's, it's. I can't even describe it. It's. Is it hot? It's hot, but it's. It feels to me. It's like a. I don't know. I associate with like when I would think of it, I would think of being like the energy, like martial energy, the energy of war, the energy right. Right. of violence, the energy of just that ch- charge. So, that. So is it here right now? Can you feel it right now? It's just, by the way, there's just a little trick with this particular, it, it actually works with a lot of different energies, but it really works well with this energy, is, is to just let it be as big as it needs to be. You don't have to hold it inside your body. This hot red energy might be bigger than your body. I don't even see it as red. It's, okay. more, it's like a... It's blue, but it's not blue. cool. Ah, it's still hot. It's... Whatever color, whatever temperature, just let it be bigger than your body. Let it be, again, just however big it would naturally be. If you, if you no longer, again, try to hold it in or get rid of it by expressing it. Instead, you just let it be here and as big as it needs to get. And then, and then tell me if it's a bad sensation. It's not bad, it's just hard. Hard, yeah. It's... I feel like I'm not big enough. So just let it be bigger. You don't have to hold it inside your body. See, we're just we're so used to kind of identifying with the body that we think that anything we experience is supposed to happen inside the body. Mm. But it's actually possible that this energy is bigger than your body. Do 
And again, is it then is it a bad sensation? No. Yeah. It's not. Now it just feels like it's supposed to be there. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank so you. It's, it's, this, it's this wonderful, wonderful thing to get really curious about, you know, how All it's right. actually the resistance to things that right. makes them hurt. Right. right. I was always told to, like, keep yourself... Yeah, hold it in. Keep yourself tight. Right. Hold your arm and hold yes. it. You know, don't, don't, don't push it. things out. Don't. Yeah. Okay. And that was probably a good thing to learn, right? Because that, at least you learn not to, like, just dump it out. Right. Right. But right. then it's like there's an in-between place. Where it has to... You just let it be. Right. Let it it's be big. Right. Yeah. Right. Still doesn't. It's, it's funny how so actually when you let it be big, there's less pressure to express it. Right. It just is. Right. If you're trying to hold it, it inside just here, is. <laughs> <laughs> if you're holding it inside here. It's like it's like then it's like a volcano. Right. right. It wants to explode. It, wa- right. it wants to le- release the pressure. Right. But when you just let it be big, there's no pressure. Right. It's just, it's it's a new way of. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you. So again, anything or nothing. And by the way, you know, if, if this is a bit much, you know, to come up in the chair, the invitation is still there. The invitation, it's like, again, it's satsang with you. Turns out, again, like I said, you can do that while you're washing the dishes. Well, guess what? You can do it while you're sitting at the back of the room. If you don't come up in the chair, there's no reason not to still... The main thing is this, is this, is this meeting, what's here. Right. And then if in the meeting what's here, there's like just something that you, 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 it's like you have to ask about or you have to find out about or there's something that's not, not clear or something that you want to know more or something you just want to say, you know, that's, that's when it can be like in support of that meeting to come up into the, to the front. Hey, have a seat, please. This, it doesn't need to be close, just like that's good. Oh, okay. It's like, you know, it's always a wonderful place to start, right? It's just with whatever happens, right? So like that, that, your heart beating, is that a bad sensation? Well, it's my mind. There's my mind saying, oh, look, your heart is beating. Yeah. You're nervous. Yes. What's up with that? Right. (laughs) (laughs) It's a cute little mind, isn't it? It's like it does its job so well. It like works so hard and like tries to be the, like the commentator on everything. Like the TV commentator. It's like we all somehow became, became uh, got a full time job. But what well, about what about the beating itself? The what? The beating itself. Is your heart still beating fast, or does it slow down uh, already, or is it? Well, now my. Uh, my mind or whatever it is, uh, there's a, uh, there's a something about, and I'll say this because this is what I hide, uh, uh so, so it's, it's something like, um, who, 
uh, when you said that, this right. is about my mind, it's a cute mind, and yeah. so it's uh, something like, oh, who are you calling cute? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't know anything <laughs> about me. <laughs> and it's this whole, the feeling yeah. was down here, part of, was because, oh, I, do, I can't say that. Uh. Now I have to try to follow what he's, you're saying, right. but I'm not allowed to say what I really... Right. Sounds like you're already past that point, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, you asked. <laughs> I am, some have some practice but not with anybody else in the room. Ah, yeah. And not outside of therapy. Right. But I don't have much practice at all with, you know, in everyday conversation or interaction. That mm. part of me is is the part, yeah, that so remember, wrong remember, or something. Remember, all, every part is welcome here. Right? Yeah. Even, even the part that, like, long ago learned not to do that, right, and to stop it. Yeah. Right. That's welcome. The part that wants to just go ahead and say what it really thinks. Now, that's all welcome. Right, now it's who? Why do you know more than me? I don't know. I, I, I'm the. Uh, you that's, are the expert about you. See again. Yeah, well, yeah. That's yeah. the part right yeah. there. There's a part that uh, doesn't like you, uh, me, even going to anybody just by you being the person up sure. here that I. I'm coming up, uh, I, this part of me doesn't like Great. you and wants to look real close. It's harder with you because you keep smiling and you're friendly <laughs> to find something to, to, to uh, yeah. uh, 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 I guess, fight about or argue. Right. Because why, I have, and I feel it, I feel it in my body. What's that you, like? What's oh, now that? it's not so bad. Yeah. Cause I, no, it's not. Because you, in a sense, by speaking it like you just did, yes, you, you, it's you just welcomed resonant. it. You said, okay, yeah. this is here. I'm it's, telling you what's here. Yeah, it's yeah. resonating through my whole chest. It doesn't ah, hurt. Good. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. In fact, it feels very good to, I rarely, 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 uh, saying it. Yeah. But it's still there. Right. It's, it's so, still. So, so just take a moment and just. Just experience it for not for me, not for me. Because well, like, now, oh, okay. There's a lot in me now. Yes. It's about oh, look at me. I'm in front of everybody. Yeah. I'm gonna perform. All right. Can you? So just, this is another part. That's oh, welcome. now, yeah. That's welcome too. Yeah. yeah this is fun. Yeah. It's like yeah. what? What happens if you just let them all be here? The whole, the whole gang, you know. Well, uh, and any doubt that comes, you just let that be here, right? Any concern that comes, you let that be here. Any part of you that gets even more angry, you know, because it's like, how dare there be a concern, you know, you let that be here. It's like, it's just, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just throwing these out, you know, it's, it's really more whatever is happening inside you. Because again, you're the, it, you're here to meet this. It has, it's, uh, you can help me. This is good. You're helping me. But you, at the same time, cannot direct me. Right. I have to be in charge. It is, absolutely. Maybe I know more than you. I'll be in charge. But <laughs> that's a big problem because I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So can you... In this... But part of me, there's the... And it, now it feels it's expanding. Because yes. it's, it, it's totally illogical. I... Part, part of me wants... Uh, hmm. Okay, so now there's some uh, yeah. confusion or something. Good. But that's very good. I get to say that, though. Yes. You can't Even... be in charge or no more. Deep, deep, deep. I'm not in touch with it, but deep, 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 deep down, I don't need you. Yes, absolutely. I... If everybody listened to me, we could maybe all just celebrate no, see, amazingly. See, they don't need... Right away. No, they'll never believe that. No, they don't need you either. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need me and they don't need you. 
And you don't need them. Now you're getting very, very deep. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you're going, see, I expect resistance to that, but you're just allowing, going, me, you're going another. <laughs> going further. Yeah, that's astounding me, but that yeah. feels okay. Yeah. It's so and much, I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, it's so much I thought simpler. I was going way too far. Mm -hmm. This part of me doesn't get expressed. Yeah. And yet, it, so, that's a surprise. Yeah. Now. I don't know. You're the expert. You oh. tell me. <laughs> <I'm getting laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Where's that part of you? That's the I'm not an expert. I'm not coming out. I never agreed to be being an expert. It's simple, though. See, you're not an expert on them. You're not an oh, expert me. on me. Oh, yeah, you're just an expert on what's That's happening right here, right now. That's all. It's, uh, like a, it's like the simplest thing to be an expert on. Because you can't ever be wrong. I'm very intrigued uh, by you, your energy. Uh, yeah. That's, and uh, I'm very, very touched by this energy of the people. Here. Yeah. Like something in me. Right. Yeah. Uh, I feel that laughter or the attention feels very uh, uh, affirming. Hmm. It's very warm inside of me. It's parts of me that you usually get like the opposite. Right. Uh, right. So it's wonderful to get that from the outside when you can. And the good news is you don't really need it from the outside because you can just do it right here, right now for yourself. Ah, uh, yeah. Part of me really, really wants it from the outside. Of Always course. Looking, looking. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's fine if that is right. affirmed and everything's not fine if there's... Right. So that's... Uh, but that's something else you can, in a sense, be, you know, this kind of simple expert. You can be your own source. That's, again, this, this invitation to actually, like, be with yourself. Yeah, then... It feels simple, really. There's so much, you know, so much to discover here, right? There's so much about this. It's so rich, surprising at times. Yeah, it's, um, confusing at times. Uh, yeah. It's like froze, uh, frozen uncertainty, like a ah, uh, yeah, frozen. A sense of oh, pr probably my time is up, and it's uh, and then <laughs> there's a, something about uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going, I'm, not leaving. <laughs> I'm staying right here. I like it here. All right, good. Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> Good. We'll just get another chair and the next person will sit over on this I'm side. Right here. I wait a long time to get a little bit of attention without getting in trouble, yelling. Right. But what happens? And I'm not going anywhere. But what happens if right now you just give it to yourself? Like way more than they're even capable of. Right? Because they, they can't, they don't know you. I don't know you. They don't know you. Nobody can really give this to, you, to yourself like you can. Right? That's really if that really does matter, which it does. Ah. It's like why not just go directly to the the place that you can re and and also the place you can rely on. Because even if you stay right here, I tell you what, eventually all these people are going to leave. <laughs> 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 right? It might not be it might not be for a little while yet, but eventually, you know, and we're going to like turn off the lights and take all this equipment, and you can just sit here. You know, you can work that out with the owner of the restaurant, but <laughs> right. <laughs> but this, you know, this possibility of just, it's like just giving attention to it yourself. Oh, it's not in, oh, it's not inter. oh, it's just me, it's not interesting. Ah. That's what. Yeah. Oh, I'm an idiot. Ah. Oh, I know me. Just for, know. just for this moment, just, just for a moment, feel that, that place that's defective. 
It's like, and it's not for me, it's not to have the right answer, it's not to impress anybody else. It's just to find out, is that really true? Is What's, it really true? Well, yeah, is it really true? What's re- what, what is the nature of that defective place, actually? What is it like if you actually look? like uh, also now there's oh I'm not cool. see there's like a well I'll just look yeah go ahead because as, as I there's things that come up as sure I so it's no I don't tell who are you I'm not telling you why are you right. asking who, who right that's good I don't tell you anything see, it, so that's another energy of mixes right. comes but that's the right thing to have happen that's like I said it's what whatever happens that's what yeah you, okay that's, that's what happens so yeah. that expressing that is helpful good so I'm so not totally identified with right. it. There. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally it. natural to, to resist, to, to say Yeah, no. there's a resistance there yeah. to cooperate. And, uh, and it's like protest. Pro, there's part of me. Sure. Pro, I'm under protest. I hear I don't agree <laughs> with telling you anything. I'll just be clear just for the record <laughs> with that. Good. And there's a, the, the and... So you there's don't, that, yeah. that, that, that uh, a defective part, when I look right. at it, feels like uh, wounded. wounded. Uh, so maybe, maybe it's not actually that there's something wrong with it, maybe it was just hurt. Like if, 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 you, if some, something hurts you, does that make you bad? Or is it just that you got hurt? Like what if it's just that something came along that hurt? And it wasn't. It doesn't really say what's good or bad. There's another resistance. Yeah. Coming there. Don't oh, you. You don't. Know, don't try to tell me. There's something. That's great. Yeah. Don't try to tell me. Don't. I'm not following you. All right. But, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't try to be my friend. Okay. That's what. That's fine. And okay, now and what, so what were you at? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like let's let's make and that's great, right? Because it's like as long some, see the willing if, because you're willing to say no to me, that can actually make it safe for you to maybe actually consider yeah, the question. Yeah. And then if if, yeah. if after you consider it, you, then you want to tell me to take a hike, you know that's great. So it's okay. It's great that you like establish that it's okay for you to say no, right? To not actually check out what I was saying. But there's this yeah. possibility that... Oh, yeah. But it, well, oh, so now I'll express this part. I have some practice with this in therapy, but yes. not like this at all. Yes. Uh, here's the part. Here's the part. I'm expressing it. So, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't say no. Don't put words in my mouth. I said... I forget what I said. <laughs> but I never said no. Okay. Good. You said... I was exp- re- expressing resistance. Mm-hmm. So there, uh, that's the that's the energy of it. Yes, good. And, it, and, it, uh, and but and now here's the difficulty with people and with which is why I come yes. up here to explore. And at the same time, another part of me wants to try to do, but what you were saying, yeah, hear just, what you were suggesting, and it's and that's and all. They that's both all. come. Yeah, that's great. So they're both welcome. Yeah, yeah they're both natural. And so what I was what I was pointing to, and this is just it's like maybe for now, just take it in as like a possibility, right? Like we're just talking about, well, it could be this, could be what what's true, right? But who knows? Yeah. It's like you yeah. have to find out. But there's this possibility, right, that that when we're when life starts coming at us, right, and it and it's just not always comfortable. It's not always easy, you know, right from the get go, right? You get hungry and you're not fed at the right time. You like things just don't happen. It's like there's discomfort. Right? It's just life, right? And that keeps coming, and we try everything we can do to deal with it, right? We try uh, avoiding it. We try getting angry. We try controlling things. We try get, acting hurt, acting depressed, so that people will take care of us, right? And then when 
I actually see ultimately all those strategies don't really completely work, right? It seems like even when you're doing all that stuff, you st- life still sometimes hurts, right? You still lose things, Pe- things, you know, bad things still happen. And this, and, and by the way, I'm talking about all this, like this, a lot of this happens before we even have like a way to think about it. It's just like an emotional thing, right? And so when it, no matter what we do, it keeps happening that we get hurt on some level we come to this conclusion well it must be my fault there must be something wrong with me and that's why the world keeps hurting me it's like i must be bad and so it's like that's why it happens to me right? and so there's like this sense of there's something broken something bad something defective but it's possible, it's just possible that it's just that life hurts. And that it doesn't really mean anything about what, you know, about this. And so that's like, that's like I said, that's that invitation to actually just go in there yourself and find out, is that is that something bad or is it just something that's been hurt a lot? And I don't mean that, you know, it's not like anything special that has been hurt, everybody gets hurt. You know, like I said, just you fall down, you you bang into things, you get, you know, you get, you know, your parents are busy right when you need their attention. You know, it's not even their fault. It's just like life does this over and over again. So maybe, maybe, you know, it's not this conclusion that there's something wrong with this. It's not, it's not really true. It might just be that it got hurt a lot. And the good news is that you really can like find out for yourself. You really can start to just experience that place. See what's really there. Is it really something horrible, you know, or bad or defective? Or is it something else? something innocent, you know, something very just innocent and alive. Good. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And again, that invitation has has nothing to do with coming up here. Everything to do with just checking what is coming up inside you, what is present, what is true about your self. And if if in any way, you know, coming up in the chair would kind of serve that, make it make it actually like the the meeting a little bit more complete. That's all. Hmm. Please, please. We'll see if it comes up, but uh, thinking back, I had a few experiences, and it was probably the one thing in my life that I would least want to ah, <laughs> meet. So great. I was sitting there thinking, what is it? And I have yes. a few things. One thing is anger. I have a difficult time really being with anger. Of course, that's natural. But even more so than that, I want to go for the whole thing. I can <laughs> go for the, the biggest yeah. one, yeah. Um, a couple times in my life, um, I got like real deep, wasn't even, I guess it was like a meditation, mm-hmm. and um, it was like a void. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's back! <laughs> <laughs> it's back! <laughs> Like 
right now, like even just to talk about it, like because it's like we could we can sit here and just talk about the memory of it. Mm-hmm. But just That's what I was hoping to see. Yeah, <laughs> it come out. Well, it's not. It's like don't even worry if that comes up. Just notice what does come up. Oh, while wow, talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Like what? Light goes on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, well, it's nervousness and. Um, yeah. How do you know you're nervous? How do you know? It's right the now? energy, you know, like. Um, it's very specifically, like where where is the nervousness? What what? How strong is it? What what exactly is the quality of the energy that lets you know it's nervousness and not something else? Uh, for me, it's like around the neck, you know, yeah? around the neck, yeah, it's yeah. around the neck area. Is there, so is there energy moving? Is there tightness? Is there... It's like tightening yeah. and, um, yeah, restriction, like hard to talk. And, yeah, yeah. So, so what happens if for a moment you just really, really experience nervous? And just check, like, is any of that that you just described, you know? Like the the tightness, the difficulty getting words out, is any of that actually a bad sensation? No, no. Yeah, yeah. when you're with it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so just, just, it's like this is, see again, you see the, the only thing about this meeting the Buddha here as yourself is that you never know what disguise it's going to wear. Right? You never know, and, it, and you might think you came up here to talk about the void, mm-hmm. right? And right. who knows, you know, the void might be the very last disguise it puts on tonight, you know, or it might be years until mm-hmm. you meet that again. But right now... It's the fear of the void is what yeah. it is. That's really what it is. Yeah. Because you know, the thought comes, well, maybe so, that's what death is. Right. And, you know, and then... So, and look at how, I mean, just how amazing that, that, mm-hmm. that just the thought of something can cause all this, all this amazing physiology. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what, a, what, a, what an amazing, like, whatever the wiring is in here, right? What an amazing system, right? Just the thought of something and shoo, it, it actually starts to happen that your throat tightens up. Right, yeah. And part of it is, that, yeah, is the talking about it. Yeah. If I sat back there and just thought about it, it wouldn't be as yeah. nervous. Yeah. But it's the talking about it, expressing it, right. sharing it. So just take a moment to really, in a, you know, it's like really, again, sit at the feet of nervousness. And I bet you, you know, I bet you it'll start to change its disguise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how about now? That's love. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a quick change artist, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's... Yeah. So how do you know it's love? Uh, it's just very soft and, ah, um... Yeah. Where is it located? It's like, well, as soon as you bow down to it, it no longer wants to restrict, it wants to embrace. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So again, that, you know, who knows about the void? The void, the void will be... What you you know you learn about the void when the void happens. Mm-hmm. There's no way to to you probably have noticed this. There's no way to kind of force these things. Right. Yeah. And so what you can find out about right now is love. Like what is the nature of love? I'll ask you. I'll ask you a funny question. Like just this is just playing, right? It's not like it's pointing to anything. It's not like it's the right question or the wrong question. It's just like is there void and emptiness in love. Is there any sense of that same void, only it's like got this flavor called love? Is there space in love? That's it. I mean, if, if, see, yeah, see, like, like, remember we always think about, oh, void. Well, that's got to be this great big thing, right? Mm-hmm. What if there's just space? Right? Is, there, is there a lot of space in love? Yeah, like the sensation of love has a certain 
Oh, it's getting softer now the more you yeah. look at it. Yeah. It's almost like can't even call it love anymore. Uh-huh. First the uh, nervousness was a tension. Right. Then it turned into kind of like jello. Uh-huh. And now it's turning into like silk. Ah. Uh-huh. And um Is there anything is there anything softer than space? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Now it's almost like breeze and then yeah. it's that it's the softest thing there is is space. The most loving thing there is is space. Yeah, and that that's that's the um that's the the game it's like um it's awareness when i first had the form of love or or let's say nervousness right, and then right. turned to love whatever forms it turned to right there was the awareness and the love right as the deeper i go into it then there's just awareness right it's awareness in right. disguise. Right, yeah. right. Again, there's nothing more loving than awareness. Yeah. That's what we all really want, right? When we want love, we just want people to give us attention, just mm-hmm. to put awareness here. Right? And yet here it's this, like, this, uh, you can check, like, this really big supply of awareness. Yeah, and I think when I had the experience of the void, what it was, um, because it was so, so empty, yes. like so empty, right. it brought up fear. Naturally. And then rather than really being aware of the fear, it was trying to be aware of trying to push the on void, through trying to, to figure out what the void is. Right. And there was no me there. Right. So then it was using the mind. It was like, I remember it was like, is, is this me? Right. And then the answer would be like, of course it's you. And then, <laughs> you know, right. but there was no me answering. It was just right. all these thoughts bouncing right. around, you know. Right. And, but if I would have went into it with my awareness of... But see, that in that moment, the place to go into is the fear. The fear. That's yes. what I missed. Yeah. yeah. I was bouncing. I was missing. So, so because, in a sense, because you didn't want it... closest. You see, when the fear is there, you might as well just forget about the void. It's like the void is is like yesterday's newspaper it's like yeah. old news it's like it doesn't you know it's like reading last week's paper to see what the weather is going to be today mm-hmm. right <laughs> right so what's here is the fear right and so the only way you could kind of touch the void at that point was to uh, now start thinking about it right because void's gone what can you do you can well i can think about it at least right i can go back to the memory of it what was like there yeah, it's but there, it was, and it's not, you know, it's like there's something it wasn't even, I can't even call it a void, it was like a no me. Uh-huh. I call it void, but it was just right. an but, absence of... But in that point, was there really no me, or was there just the thought there's no me? Exactly, because right. there must have been some me, because it was <laughs> asking questions. Right. Right. <laughs> that's fine, <laughs> you know, it's itself. like the void, the void came for a visit, and that's wonderful. It's like, great, the void came for a visit, and, and that triggered fear. So that's fear coming for a visit, mm-hmm. right? Just like just like tonight, you know, you came up here to talk about the void, but what visited was nervousness. Who knows? You know, you put out you you put out the cookies and the tea, and who knows going to show up? Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's the beauty of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's the that again. That's the invitation, right? To meet yourself however it shows up. And, and it turns out, you know, it always turns out to be richer than you thought. You know, like you start exploring nervousness and guess where you ended up in love. Now we talked about keeping one foot in. Oh, yeah. Right? Right. So we have, we'll use the nervousness. Right. So there's this, let's say something happens and all this fear comes up. Right. And there's two directions we can go. One, if we, one would say resist the fear, but you don't even know you're resisting it. You're kind of being taken over by it. Right. Then that will shut down the heart. Right. And the other one is to try to keep the heart open. 
or try to keep one foot in each. Right. It's, see, it's like know, trying again. So. Right. It's like, see, that, that, it's, it's actually, see, if you really, really get the hang of it, if you find out it's not really, this, this keeping one foot in and one foot out is not really a prescription. Yeah, it's not really like an al- yeah, it's analogy. It's not, it's not, it's, no, it's a description mm-hmm. of what's actually always happening. Right? But the place where it's happening is in whatever is happening now. Right. So if you're if there's a fear that comes up but then there's this resistance to the fear, the place where you actually have one foot in and one foot out is in the resistance. Right? That's the place where that's what you're actually the most aware of. And so that's actually the place where this this alchemy, you know, this mystery of healing can actually happen. Mm. That's that's what you that's the it's in a sense the only thing you can really be curious about in that moment. Because it's what's happening. And that's where awareness is. That's where awareness is meeting what's happening. You miss it because it's the most subtle, I think. Yeah, and sometimes Sometimes you don't realize we're resisting. Right. And and sometimes, you know, resistance itself triggers another layer of resistance. Right? Especially especially if you've been into spiritual stuff and you've, you know, been taught that it's bad to resist. Then the first thing that happens whenever resistance shows up is you start to resist it. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Right. Well, you I start say, to try to embrace, yeah, yeah, or you try to you try to get rid of it by embracing it. You try yeah. to you know you you pull out all your spiritual tricks to try to get rid of the resistance. Right? Mm-hmm. So what that really is is resistance to resistance. Right? It's just we're just good at it. That's all. <laughs> we're just we've got a lot of skill, you know, a lot of natural ability to resist things, but. I can tell you that there's some there's something appearing right now, you know, and in every moment that you that you're actually not resisting. Right? So when resistance when you're just resisting, you're not actually resisting the resistance. Mm-hmm. Right? And then when you when you kind of do this meta thing, you know, where you step outside and say, "Oh no, no, that's not spiritual. I shouldn't be so resistant. I got to stop resisting." Right? In that moment, you're not resisting the, all these thoughts that no, 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 I got to stop resisting. Right? That's the thing. That's the place where, in a sense, your being has one foot in and one foot out. That's the place where you can where you can discover something about yourself. You know, about it's like it's like right there. It's like wow, it's amazing how even spiritual truth I use as a way to resist myself. Like wow, what a what a creative thing! So again, back to like right here, right now. That's the that's the question. What what did what I just say bring up here? What, um, if, what if one foot in, one foot out is just your nature? Yeah, and what kind of came was that. The uh, s- simple awareness, just being aware of yeah. something, will show one foot in, one foot out. Just yes. being aware of it. Yes. It's What's it because like right it ha- you always have to have one foot in, one foot out in right. this realm. Right. So, it's so, like right now, this thought, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you've got one foot in and one foot out. Right. What's it like to What's it like to have thought? Exactly. Right. Like what's it like when it's what you're, what you're, really, really tasting in the moment is your thoughts. If for a moment you let go of all these ideas about what's true about thoughts, and you just actually like experience the experience of thought. Is it a bad sensation? No, it's like anything. Uh, it's like I have I'm aware that I'm aware yeah it's like that right I'm aware that I'm aware right and then there's also whether it's thought or right. people or whatever right but um And to be aware that I'm aware, that's the beautiful thing. That's the one foot right. in. And the one right. foot out is whatever I'm aware of. Right. Now, 
um, what you're pointing to, I guess, is the times that maybe you don't have this awareness that I'm aware. You're just it's, nervous, say, but I'm not aware mm-hmm. that I'm aware of nervousness. Uh, you know, like I said, if you, it, it, I, I challenge you to find a moment where you're not aware of something. Even of this, this, you know, for a moment, let go of this idea that it has to be awareness of awareness. Mm-hmm. And start to like say, well, what about if I just, lo- like, it's kind of like lowering the bar, you know, like you don't have to like be at this place where there's awareness of awareness. Mm-hmm. Instead, you just lower right. the bar and see, is there awareness, period. Sure, yeah. yeah. Obviously, any time we're having any sensation at all, there has any, to be awareness. I mean, it's, it's like I challenge you to actually, find, you know, stop being aware. Exactly. <laughs> and I've been doing that lately. Um, and then you get those waves that you, that I am awareness. That's right. all I am. And right. you get it's, these waves but, but of But the, the way into that experience is by first just starting with the awareness that's here right now. Whatever it is. Whatever, whatever it is. Manifestation. Whatever is. thought, whatever mm-hmm. fear, whatever nervousness, whatever resistance, whatever confusion, whatever excitement, whatever curiosity. It's like you, it, it does, that's, it's like you just pick it up right where it is. That's one foot in, one foot out. And it's a description of something about your nature. Right. This this awareness that you are, it loves going into all these experiences. It loves tasting the void and it loves tasting thought. And those are totally different ends of the of the tiger. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally different experience. Tickling yourself with the little tiger's tail versus, you know, smelling that breath coming out of the tiger's mouth. (laughs) Yeah, it's almost like it just came and is there's some thought, right? Yeah. It's just uh, how beautiful. It's we're on this ride and you might as well enjoy it. Yes. You can either enjoy the ride or you can fight it. Right. Either way, you're on the ride. Right. It's just, it's just when you fight it, then... Oh, see, again, it's, it's the, the problem with awareness is not... Because I'm not going to control is, awareness. It's is, just is that it's not picky. You know? Exactly. It's Aware- so embracing. It's so, it, I, like I say, it's a total slut for experience. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so if you if you say okay I'm no I'm going to fight this one tooth and nail then awareness says okay let's fight this one tooth and nail right. exactly and then if, and then if yeah. some spiritual impulse comes and says oh I shouldn't I shouldn't be you know fighting this one tooth and nail right then awareness says okay let's be spiritual and try and not fight this one tooth and nail right. it's not even yeah it's yeah. almost it's not even like it's saying you know it's not like it's even premeditative or right, anything. It's right. just so probably so infinite that it can right. it, it's got but it, infinite ways of, but again, of expression it, right. expressing of experiencing something. But again what what we're talking about is awareness, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's just incredibly sensitive. Right. It's inc- everything affects it. Right. And so even this, even this simple, simple thing of recognition, right, that there's awareness, the recognition of awareness affects awareness. It does, yeah. So to, to mm-hmm. even to do this, you know, just this innocent kind of exploration of what's really here. Right? So it's not, it's not that, you know, it's like kind of like, oh yeah, okay, well, yeah, awareness, yeah, right. It's like awareness, and then it's like, but now what's it like? Right. What does that do to it? I think where we get, maybe, I don't know, most, maybe probably most people on the path, at least for me, I think we literally are trying to become aware of awareness. Right. And, 
It's you aware- can't. If I'm right. aware of awareness, that's really a pseudo awareness. Right. It's a thought about awareness. Yeah. Awareness. See, the way you, the way you, you experience. If I let go of trying to be aware of it. Right. And you just kind of soften into what's here. It's almost like your peripheral vision. Right. You know, awareness is there. Right. It's, that's. But it's yeah. so. It's not sl- subtle. Right. It's, it's like not. It's not a thing. It's not an object of experience. No. And it, it's the, the tiniest of little it. speck of trying to be aware of it or see it. So, like it's, it's gone. It's well, like no. It, see, actually, it doesn't go. It just jumps into that. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> it just follows you into. Oh, okay. Now we're trying to be aware of awareness. Cool. What's this like? Right. Right. It takes form. Yes. You know. I. I, I been sharing, you know, a while back, this friend of mine sent me this email, right? And it was the diary of a cat, right? And the diary of a dog, mm-hmm. right? And and the diary of the cat was day 787 of my forced captivity. You know? <laughs> Once again, my captors ate all this really delicious food while putting this, like, canned glop in front of me. <laughs> And then it went on about all of it, the ways it tried to kill its captors by weaving in and out of their feet, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then it had a little thing, note to self, next time try it at the top of the stairs. <laughs> that's good. Right. So that's the cat's diary. Yeah. Right? Then the dog's diary is, oh boy, breakfast, my favorite. Oh boy, going for a walk, my favorite. Oh boy, chasing the ball, my favorite. Oh boy, taking a nap, my favorite. <laughs> So at the risk of like really offending cat owners everywhere, yeah. right? <laughs> awareness is more like d- the dog. <laughs> it just says, oh, trying to be aware of awareness. Oh boy, my favorite. Right. It, does, it doesn't work, like you said. You know, it, does, it just tangles you up in a, kinda, in a funny little knot. But awareness says, oh boy, my favorite, tangled up. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. awareness isn't again isn't it's 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 like you it's a strange thing to say it's not really that you experience it but the closest way you can say it is you experience it by being it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think. So we're looking at this, you know, and how people change and you know right. and transformation of people, and I think we're all thinking that we're transformed because we become aware of something. It, it does transform things the moment there. But I don't know if it's really being aware. Of, you can't be aware of it. It's almost like something comes where we relax so fully that we simply yes. allow ourselves to experience everything. Right. And, th- and then, you know, I always say, see, it's a, again, it's not something you do, it's what you are that transforms things. Right. Right. So it's like there is this, see, transformation happens, but no one has ever done it. Right. And no one has ever really figured out how it happened. Right, right. There was there was a cartoon years ago in the New Yorker of this scientist, and he's working on a formula, right? And he's filled up like half the blackboard with this formula, right? And then he gets to this spot in the formula where he doesn't know how to go on from here. So he just writes in the blackboard, then a miracle happens. <laughs> and then he fills up the rest of the blackboard with the formula. <laughs> That transformation is like that. Yeah. There's no formula. There's no, it's like it just, a miracle happens. Every time, right? Every time. Every moment actually is that miracle. Because awareness is always meeting something. So something is actually always transforming. So our experience is always changing. The force, you know, the force that makes life unfold is awareness what fuels it all, love, awareness, being. It's working, it's working perfectly. <laughs> so how about right now? What's it, what's it doing right now? And this, and this question, you know, this isn't really for me, it's not even to like, for you to have to answer. It's again, it's like just this invitation. It's this invitation to awareness here. Just some awarenesses, you know. I don't know how I know it, but just awareness is what I think. Um, 
creates pain and restriction in life, I think is simply yeah, thought. It's simply not right. Thought thought is the way we do this to awareness. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like it's like we have this. A thought. It's like you, you know we have these muscles that we can do this with, right? Well, like the gentleman here was up, you know, concerned about how he looks when he rides the bike or this and that. Who cares? You know, it's like what a right. beautiful expression. Right. Probably half the people here would say, "God, I'd love to be like him." You know, <laughs> you know, just right. Loving. So it's um, somehow, and even that, we get. I think we get to the point where we might have been conditioned to resist things, mm. and say I shouldn't be this way. Right. And then, okay, let me just be that then. Let me yes. just be this walking resistance. Right. It's, it's like, and it's, not, it's not, thought does have that effect, but that doesn't mean it's bad or wrong. Right. It's just different than what happens when there's, uh, you know, when there's curiosity about what else is here besides thought. Mm-hmm. Right? Noticing something other than thought tends to do this. Noticing thought tends to do this. It's definitely a challenge, though, because it's our thoughts that come in because we're convinced that we can use things to change things. We think that thought's going to get us somewhere. Or we think that by, like you said, surrendering to something is going to transform this no. or by allowing something right. or by so surrender again, looking at surrender it. isn't something you do right surrender is more again a description <coughs> of the of the actual circumstances you know that you're surrounded and you're out of bullets <laughs> <laughs> that's always the case right in life we're always surrounded and really actually out of bullets all we've got left is blanks right? yeah and somehow we can i guess if we're conscious of it um, we can consciously allow things to be. Uh, you know, uh, my sense is that we, what happens is we there there is this kind of conscious experience of it, but that's more like it's more like um, you know I, I had a I had a dog once my, that you know that it just was totally untrainable. So whenever whenever it sat, I would go sit. Very good. That's a see. Good dog. <laughs> So I think all these all these conscious kinds of things that we quote unquote do, mm-hmm. right? It's like it's already happening, and then we get, and then the mind tries to claim credit for it. You yeah, know, we'll the, never do it with the mind, right. but there seems to be maybe it's the awareness in us because I yes, it does. We can it, have a choice. The impulse like, just comes from somewhere deeper than the mind, right? But to say that we consciously choose, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, what gives one person right. the desire to, uh, you want to say, become present versus right. another person? Right. What? Yeah. What is that? What yeah. is that impulse? Yeah. It's it's beautiful. It's there amazing. Must be awareness wanting to right. it's saying, go there. Let's go there now. Mm-hmm. So it's very subtle, but totally, totally it's so totally. subtle. It's it's literally just um, experiencing everything that comes for yes. no reason other than to experience it. Yeah, it's, but it's very subtle. It's, it is. It's the, it's the, it's, it's, it's like ever, being a child. It's always present, but it's always the most subtle thing right. that's present. And the trick of the thing, though, is is the word everything. Yes. It's experienced everything. Everything. We'll start experiencing, and then a thought will come. Well, I'm not supposed to to experience that thought. Well, that's that's the spiritual thing, right. And and then the spiritual impulse that I'm not supposed to experience that thought is part of the everything. Yeah, and then exactly experience (laughs) that. (laughs) Yeah. And I think it comes in layers as as we do this. You just naturally start experiencing experiencing more and more and more. Right. It's almost either we get worn down or <laughs> it's, yeah, or it's usually it's often much more often from that from yeah, this kind of resisting. A lot of people, a lot of people that. think that there's going to be some really big insight <laughs> that then this this it's meeting of things is just going to happen, right? But it's more like the the efforting just kind of wears itself out. 
Mm-hmm. Right? And then what's left is awareness. Right? When, yeah, you're not, when you're not having, doing anything else, what's left is awareness. Um, but different jobs and things like that, problems would come up and they seem like they're impossible to fix and I'd worry for three days straight, nonstop, hmm. Hmm. over and over and Wasn't over. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> Isn't it like, I mean, it was intense, right? No, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, I something like it because yes, it did it, right? Right. And that's the thing. We're identifying with that, right. the mind that doesn't like it, when actually right. I loved it. Yes. That's great. It's fun. I mean, it's fun to try to figure things out interesting with the mind. thing, though, is I, it got to a point where it's like, I can't take this more. I give up. Yes, it wears itself out. And then the problem takes care of itself. Right. You know, that's it's interesting. Everything's connected, you know, yes. energetically. But, yeah. Um, I think that's what it is. It's a wearing down of uh, trying to get anywhere, trying to become anything. Yeah. It, it, it just wears us down where you just... So how about right now? It, you so just how start about, experiencing it. How things. about right now? How worn out are you? With even trying to figure this out. Also, yeah. Well, I'm tired of figuring it out. That's, yeah. You know, it's really... Yeah. So you just are where you are. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is this is it working perfectly. Mm-hmm. And all part of the mechanism is the mind that's going to come in. and yes, it's, it's still trying to figure it out a little bit. <laughs> not figure it out, but like think about... Oh, mm. what happens if this happens? Then can you really experience it? So that's like a or? that's a prefiguring out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the mind thinks it still maybe has a chance to like exactly get it right this time. <laughs> it's so it, it, yeah. So even right now, it's like it, right away it wants to like come up with a formula about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so that's that's why I called that. it cute. You know, <laughs> that's why I called it cute. Yeah, because the mind is like you can, I don't, it, whatever you, wh- however you expose it, whatever it just takes that and like says, okay, yeah, okay, well now I'll think about that. <laughs> you know, it's very cute. It's very, it's very, it's like a, it's, like, it's actually very innocent, right? It's very innocent. It was, it, it is, was, it was trying. set it's in motion. To do good. <laughs> yes, you know, it wants yes. to it's nature, save the world. Its nature is Buddha nature, also. Mm-hmm. Talk about the last place you would ever think to find it. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, really, underneath every thought. If you yes. really get a thought as an energy, right. you can feel it. Why else would you think unless, and then in there, unless that, there was some caring, some love? Yeah. You don't think about things you don't care about. It's just love. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think you actually can stay right there. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>